Hey, hey you. Yes, you. Have you ever wanted to travel thousands of meters into the air in a matter of minutes? Well then have I got a machine for you. Introducing the new and improved Pocket Piston Elevator. You'll be shooting into the sky at a terrifying 64 miles per hour. Yes, that's right. New discoveries have allowed us to revolutionize the elevator industry in such a way that you can pull 3 G's without passing out. Now you too can travel faster than the server admins at a push of a button. Stock is limited, so call now. To order, call 555-555-5555 or wait for a trained professional momentarily. Hey guys, it's BenRom0329. Sorry for that uh, somewhat cheesy skit there at the start, but I figured I'd do something a little different this time around. Uh, so yeah, I have improved the elevator design since the Miscons competition that happened on the Unofficial Mind Test Discord. Um, but because of it, I've had to use carts as the transport mechanism, so... That does complicate getting in it a little bit more, but it also simplifies it in other ways because you don't have to be precise with where you are in the elevator. Uh, and for going down, since I don't have to make the elevator go down now, it's much easier to just, and much faster in this case, to just, uh, to just have you drop into a water column and be able to come out here. So a general overview of what you do to get in, I have a little minecart placer here. You get in, then you ride over, pushes you over, and yeah, I'm going to have to put a seizure warning on this video. But overall, this is actually quite fast. If I pop open the bug here, you can see we're climbing quite quickly. Uh, this elevator is about 1,600 nodes high and it climbs in somewhere around a minute. Uh, I'll be able to put an exact time up now that uh, I'm actually recording it. I can see. And then it just kind of pops you over like this. You can just kind of mind that. Then you get back down. I just have a little guide here. Drop down. And... Coming up here shortly should be the water column. You can touch down. And you just walk out like that. So the general overview of how this thing works is that I have boost carts loaded. So I have detector rails. Uh, in addition to all the default rails. And the reason why detector rails are useful is so that we can know exactly when the player's in. Now if you don't have those, you can use a player detector probably buried in the ground. That will work fine. And then I just have this connected to some vertical miscons so that we don't activate the piston quite yet. And then that runs over here and into two monostable circuits. This one's slightly delayed from the other one that will pump the piston twice. Pushing the minecart over right about where that piston there is, the second one up. Right after that, we'll send a signal into here, and that will feed the signal through here due to the way that I have this wired up. Because vertical MISCON does not interact with MISCON, MIS blocks that are directly underneath. Which means that you can kind of have this alternating pattern between them going all the way up. And because in this case diodes, but gates in general have a very slight delay to them. Which means that you can use them as a very, very small delay gate, if need be. And that's useful because uh, what we do here for the actual piston portion, which is the main part, is that 
this bit will get activated and then it will immediately activate here and then shortly afterwards this will push it out and this will immediately connect with the already activated corner here and push up and then once the signal is gone this will be the first one to go down so that when it gets through here this piston will pull it back and that is kind of the whole idea behind this thing so let's see how to build one so the basic design is a horizontal sticky piston with a vertical non-sticky piston and then kitty corner to that another horizontal sticky piston with a vertical regular piston and then just that kind of stacked up. So we're going to build a five high elevator here because that is the minimum size to have a stackable section uh, because of the way that the wiring is behind for the timing going up. So now that you have your main column built, we need to put in the wiring. And we'll start with the wiring from the very bottom. So you want to place a corner so that it connects with this piston and then run some wire over and then take a diode and place it into there. You will then want to place another corner here and a T there so that you have a nice exit point here. We'll then come over to the other side and place down some blocks like so and we will repeat this wiring pattern but on the opposite side and at this point if you're in creative it really is helpful to just go into slow fly and then for here we are going to do the opposite and the reason we're shifting this over to one side is because the vertical timing circuit is three blocks wide. And because of that, we can't have it perfectly centered without using a ton of more material. So it's a lot easier to just shift these over to one side or the other because we need the same amount of materials either way. So now, to build the vertical timing circuit, what we're going to want to do is first figure out which side needs to start. In this case, it's this side, because it's the lower side. And you'll want your input to be like that. So it will flow in here, and then loop up. And then essentially, you just want to alternate back and forth between these two orientations. You'll then want to place down, in this case, I'm placing down a Mies block first. You could also choose to do vertical Mies con, but I think it looks a little better to have the single Mies block as opposed to an unconnected piece of vertical Mies con. And you essentially just alternate between them like this. So now we just have to do the same thing on alternating sides all the way up. All right, so now that that's done, all we have to do is place in the glass on the front. And that's about it. At this point, it's functional and you could loop this and you could stack this with roll in it approximately anyways i think i might have been slightly off my calculations as to uh the stackableness of this and if we grab a button it works quite nicely i will say that i've had the best luck with having these things face either on the plus X or minus X or east and west axes, uh, just for the final get on and get off of them. But uh, overall, I believe it should work fine like this. So to make the loading system so that we can load a minecart in here, you're gonna wanna place a piston right about here. And this block is going to need to be empty. Uh, you can place a block here, or you can not. It doesn't really matter. But this space here specifically needs to be empty, as the piston will push any block that you put there forward. So then, because I am using Boost Cart, which I highly recommend so you get the latest upstream fixes, uh, I have detector rails, 
which I'm going to use to make sure that the cart is in the exact correct position when the whole system activates. So you basically just have to place one there, and then grab your normal rails, and run it out. You could put this in a mine track as well, uh, because this does work perfectly fine with normal mine carts. So you could just, you could basically have a mine cart elevator uh, to transfer items or uh, people just without having to do anything fancy. And then in order to grab the signal from the power rail here, we're going to have some vertical miscon going down a layer like so. I'm just going to end up running that all the way around there. Along with a delayer set to the second option. So now at this point, you can make the piston activator, which is going to have to send two pulses slightly delayed between each other. To do that, we're going to use a little circuit known as the monostable circuit. To build that, I'm going to build it in reverse here. Just bear with me for a second. Basically what the monostaple circuit does is it takes a pulse of any length and reduces it down to a very finely timed length. And the way it does this is that you have the same signal coming into both the piston and this Mies block. And the signal is slightly delayed from the Mies block to the piston. And we do that in this case by adding a delayer here and just a straight wire. So it will first come to here and power and send power through. But then shortly after, it will come to the piston, pushing this block up, cutting off the power to everything afterwards. And then just for sanity's sake, I'm going to use a, a normal delayer for this. And then this isn't the most compact way to wire this up, but it will do the job for now. At least I can actually get the wires in place here. Like so. And at this point, the elevator is finished. You can add a landing pad on top, depending on which direction the elevator itself is actually facing. It will change whether the minecart is pushed or pulled away from the last piston. I'm assuming it has something to do with the way that the pistons check all the directions for pushing and pulling and which ones are checked first or last, but either way, uh, should work fine. So now with that fixed and out of the way, it should work. Just like that. So that about does it for the Pocket Piston Elevator 2.0 improved, the vertical zipper elevator, whatever you want to call it. If you guys want to see more MISCON tutorials in the future, please let me know. And last but not least, thanks for watching.